The federal trade minister has launched a new challenge over an old dispute, softwood lumber. Canada says U.S. duties on this country's wood are hurting both Canadian businesses and American consumers. CBC's Kyle Bax is on this story for us in Washington, and he joins us live. So, Kyle, forgive us, but this story is a little dry to most people, but to help break it down for us, how did we get here again? Well, this all kind of kicked off earlier in the month when the U.S. Department of Commerce came out with its most recent review of tariffs when it comes to Canadian softwood lumber. And the U.S. decides to actually cut the tariffs in half from about 18 percent down to 9 percent. Now, it does vary from one Canadian company to another. But, you know, that wasn't received well by the federal government. So the international trade minister, Mary Ng, came out saying she was disappointed, also saying that uh, these tariffs are unwarranted and unfair. And so that's why the federal government is now launching this trade challenge, trying to essentially wipe out these tariffs altogether. And Kyle, we understand that there are Americans that support the Canadian point of view. Who are they? Well, mainly home builders in the United States who are looking for, you know, some cheaper products. You know, especially at this time right now where there are problems with supply chains, with inflation, you have a lot of these American home builders who would really like to see these, uh, these duties on Canadian softwood lumber, you know, just removed. But the U.S. has said for many years now that it feels that Canadian lumber producers are subsidized and those companies can dump their products in the United States at a lower price than, than their American counterparts. And so that's why the United States puts these tariffs in place to try to level the playing field. Canada has long said that those allegations are untrue. And whenever this issue goes to any of these trade tribunals, they always side with Canada. So this latest trade challenge by the federal government, it's going to be going to the dispute resolution system that's set up under this new trade agreement with Canada, U.S. and Mexico. So just the latest chapter in this, in this drama over softwood lumber. Kyle Bax in Washington, thank you. And let's mm -hmm. stay with this story. Mary Scott Greenwood is the CEO of the Canadian American Business Council and partner at Crestview Strategy U.S. Mary Scott, thank you so much for making time for us. Thanks, Natasha. Great to be with you. Mary Scott, I got to tell you, it's been 20 years and I'm softwood lumbered out. And I think most Canadians are. Why is this particular issue still driving a wedge between America and Canada? You're right, Natasha. This is the uh, gift that keeps on giving for trade lawyers. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Uh, we're on the fifth generation of softwood lumber. And actually, I asked the same question you did of uh, Raymond Chrétien, the former Canadian ambassador to the U.S., who uh, advises Quebec, I think, on this issue, to, you know, even now. And, and I said, why, isn't, why wasn't this dealt with in the original free trade agreement between Canada and the United States, uh, let alone NAFTA, let alone USMCA? Like, why haven't we taken care of it? And he said, it's too thorny. It's too hard. Um, we actually literally needed to separate it out um, because it's so difficult to get through. And the reason, I guess, is that there is a fundamental difference in the way Canada man has forced uh, forest management practices and the way the U.S. does. Canada, anyway, we could get into it, but there are fundamental uh, differences in policy and in the way our forests are managed, and that leads to commercial disputes. Okay, that makes sense. So let's talk about this particular instance where our trade minister has issued a formal complaint and they're moving forward with that and describing this particular challenge as being unfair, that the rates being changed is unfair. What does that mean? Why are they unfair? Well, Canada never, no country ever wants tariffs on its products, right? And I think the best argument that Minister Ng and Canada make is that uh, at a time when the U.S. and Canada are trying to recover economically, uh, having affordable housing, we know that lumber is the second largest uh, input into the cost of a house, second only to labor. Uh, but so having affordable inputs is a very good argument right now in the economy. The other side of that argument, though, is that U.S. timber and lumber producers 
customers want to get a good price for what they're selling as well. You know, Natasha, I talked about this. I actually have a podcast. Who doesn't? It's like jury duty. Everyone's got to do it, right? And we had three episodes on Canusa Street, which is our podcast, on just the softwood lumber dispute, unpacking it because it is so longstanding. It is so complicated. And the the differences on either side are big, but also, Natasha, the differences within Canada are fairly large. British Columbia versus the Maritimes versus Ontario, Quebec, they're all different. So the fact that Minister Ng is coming forward right now tells me that Canada has managed to get all of its ducks aligned and is ready to take on the U.S. We also understand from Kyle Bax's reporting that home builders in the United States are actually backing the Canadian point of view on this. So explain that to me. What did they stand to lose or gain in this argument? Well, Kyle was right in, in his reporting. The U.S. home builders want to have uh, good prices for their input. So that's that's really what it's about. It's a, it's a commercial question. And you've got U.S. timber producers who want to get the best price for their lumber. You've got Canadian producers who want to get the best price for theirs. And so these uh, these tariffs and, and all of that sort you know are trying to balance out a market uh, that otherwise would just be trading back and forth. And so so it's it's all about, you know, the interests are all about who who's making money um, and who's trying to make more money and who's trying to build houses that people can afford. So right now, where do things stand? So we've our government has presented this challenge. But the rate, as I understand it, is still happening on what the Americans wanted, which is that lowered rate. So how long does the resolution process take? Uh, well, it could take years. You know, literally, this is not an exaggeration, Natasha. The U.S. and Canada have been arguing about softwood lumber um, since the 1800s. And um, so you have temporary agreements about how to manage the trade back and forth, um, and they last as long as they last, and then they expire. So the last one we had, uh, the agreement we had uh, in lumber trade expired in 2015. So this has been coming, um, and it'll be resolved when the two federal governments decide that it's high enough priority. So clearly Canada has made that decision. So can it get the attention of the Biden administration uh, and of Congress? It's a little bit of a politically distracted moment right now for the U.S. So I think it could take some time before it's resolved. And in the meantime, uh, there are trade tribunals that occur, you know, at the WTO and other places, uh, and they take forever to work through. This is full employment for trade lawyers, Natasha. So basically, you're telling me in 20 years, you and I are going to have this conversation again. <laughs> we are. It's sad, uh, but I think that's right. <laughs> okay, Mary Scott Greenwood, thank you so much for your time and for your analysis. Thanks for having me.